All righty. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Welcome um, to this evening's event. We have the University of Arizona um, presenting uh, information about their school. We have Casey John, who's an admissions representative from the university here. And um, my name is Todd Wilcox. I work with Winslow Residential Hall. I'm a 21st century coordinator. And um, with this program, it's an after school based program focusing on academic enrichment opportunities for students. Um, we offer tutoring, tutoring to students, um, along with activities focused on health and wellness, um, culture, career, or I'm sorry, culture awareness, and college and career um, preparation. Um, so we thank you, Casey, for being here this evening. And um, we are excited to hear what you have to say. So you have the floor, thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you students who are here. Uh, I know it's uh, Wednesday evening, it's after school. I'm sure you've got homework and things to do, but I'm definitely excited to have you guys here. And I don't really like to take too much time because I love to answer questions. Um, maybe ha already have a question in mind definitely feel free to put it in the chat and that can just make sure, I can make sure to answer that right at the end. Um, but before I get started, I do wanna recognize that the University of Arizona does reside on the ancestral homelands of the indigenous peoples of Southern Arizona. So we're located in Tucson and we're right adjacent, right within the homelands of the Tono Otham Nation, as well as the um, neighbors of Pascoyaki Nation. So there's definitely a native community down South. Um, so always just want to recognize that. Uh, but I'm a part of the Native Outreach Team, but I also do am assigned Northern Arizona. So I work with Winslow High School, Holbrook, Pinon, every, every area from, I would say, White River to Winslow to Page, that whole Northeast corner is my area that I work with, as well as the state of New Mexico. So in case you are a student that decides to even transfer over to any of the community colleges like NPC or Danette College, or even if you go to Farmington at San Juan, um, I'm really the person that, that's gonna help be helping you with the application. That's my job is to help you when you're here. Um, I also come from the Navajo Nation. My family is from Saley and Wheatfields. Uh, so I love to go back out there when I can. Um, as I mentioned before, I did live out in Tehachi, New Mexico, um, just because it's really nice to be in close proximity to all of you guys. Winslow was only two hours and 15 minutes away, so it was really easy. Um, so we'll see what the next year holds, especially for any future applicants or future seniors who are going to be graduating next year or even this year. Um, I'm always happy to help. But just a little bit about Tucson. Um, like I said, we're the university located in Tucson. It's Arizona's second largest city. We have a ton of sunshine, except today, actually yesterday, it's been cloudy and sprinkling, which is pretty rare around this time. Um, normally right now is probably in about the 90s, um, but the fall and the winter are definitely some of my favorite areas, our favorite times to be here in Tucson. I, I love this picture because it has the rock wall climbing areas that we have. So right, um, I guess, surrounding the city of Tucson are four different mountain ranges. I got my geology degree, so I know a ton about, ton about the environment um, in Tucson, but there's four different mountain ranges and they all have various hiking, biking, camping spots, lakes. So if you miss being up north, you miss kind of the cooler weather. There's a lot of places for you to go to experience that. I used to work with an um, a retired Chinle English teacher, and he actually chose the University of Arizona just because they had really cool rock climbing areas um, because we're world renowned for the granite um, rocks that you'll see there. So lots to do outside for sure. Um, lots of excursions, things that you can do um, if you're an outdoors person. And then the last bullet point, you'll see food. So in case you're hungry, I know I'm hungry. I'm waiting to eat some, some chips right after this. Uh, but we have the best 23 miles of Mexican food in the nation. Um, we're known as the, the nation's first gastronomy city. So gastronomy is just the study and the love of food. And so there's like this fancy society that has decided that Tucson has the best food out of the country, which is really cool. So um, my favorite places to eat are definitely like El Guero Canelo, where you can get a snoring hot dog wrapped with bacon 
or even if you want some nice Southern Mexican food, like a cocido soups or menudo, um, some, some other like places. I love EG's. Um, EG's has amazing ranch fries, but they also have this like slush that you can eat in different flavors. And they always have a flavor of the month. So if you meet anybody from Tucson, they're gonna know what EG's is and they're probably gonna miss what it is. So if you ever come down to Tucson, definitely check those things out. But also Tucson is not just an outdoors and food place. It's also, um, there's a ton of things to do in terms of the city life. You know, there's a great downtown area. Um, Tucson is a really great community because they're always having events. So just this past month, I would say we have the giant gem and mineral show. So if you love looking at giant amethyst um, crystals and rocks, they have like some that are like 10 feet tall, which is giant and they're worth millions of dollars. Um, people all around the world come to Tucson just to do that. Um, there's usually big kind of music festivals. So of course with COVID-19, you know, our community events have been affected because of course safety is, is the utmost importance, but hopefully slowly we can bring back some of those really cool events. Um, one of my favorite things to do was every November, if you've ever seen um, Coco, the Disney movie Coco, they talk about Dia de los Muertos, and that's um, the Day of the Dead, and it's really big in the Mexican culture, as well as some of the um, indigenous cultures, so the Otham really celebrate it too. Um, but every November, they would have a giant parade where people were painting their faces with, uh, with skeletons, they were um, basically, it was just a day to remember your past loved ones or your loved ones who have passed on. But it was such a really cool experience. So there's definitely those things that happen. And then if you like live music, um, that's one of the things that I miss is being able to go to a restaurant or even in this picture in the background is the Rialto Theater to just go see some live music. Sometimes they'll have big bands. Sometimes they'll have small bands. Um, it really depends. And it's all different music genres. Um, I love classical rock, so our classic rock. So of course the local casino, I would go see like the sticks. I saw 38 special. Um, so there's definitely some other people, especially country artists who will come down to Tucson as well. Um, but Phoenix is only an hour and 45 minutes. So if you wanna see a big name artist, like I don't know who was recently here. It's been a while, but you know, you'll be able to travel really closely especially if you got some friends who have a car or even if you have family that live out in Phoenix. Um, so other than Tucson, um, the university itself is definitely the highlight of Tucson. You know, we have these awesome, great rankings. We're one of the top 1% universities in the world. We're one of the top 20 public research institutions in the nation. So we definitely have a great degree program with anything that you wanna study, we probably are gonna offer um, everything from music, to marketing, to medicine. Um, a lot of students tend to come to us for nursing, for astro astrology and, and planetary science, astronomy, excuse me, and planetary sciences, um, optical sciences, um, anything within the medicine field, the veterinary science, because we have the only vet school in Arizona and we have veterinary science and animal science. So like I said, really anything that you can study, you'll be able to, to access at the university. So one of the really unique things. Um, about the campus ex itself, this is, should be something that you consider when you look at a university. You wanna look at yourself and say, what kind of community, what kind of college am I gonna really feel at home? Am I gonna fit in with? Um, we are a fairly large school, but out of the three state universities in Arizona, we're the middle, the middle size. So our campus is only one square mile. So, Everything that you would ever want, if you want the student union to go grab a bite of Panda Express or Steak and Shake or even core the salad place, if you need to go to the library, if you ever want to attend a sporting event once we are able to open those student sections, um, those are there. If you want to live on campus, we have 24 residence halls just within that one square mile. So technically, you wouldn't even have to get off of campus to get anything that you need. Um, and there's, of course different um, places to hang out. And I love the mall where you have the beautiful palm trees. So sometimes it can feel like you're in California, which is really weird. Um, but this building is here, right here is cool. So just a little bit of history. Um, we were established in 1885. So we've been here well over a hundred years and we're the first university to be established. Um, 
So lots of really, really great programs. And we've been here for a while. And, and that's what we're designed to be, being the first university, is that we're here to serve all students, all the way from out from you Nogales, know, Arizona, which is just right near the Mexican border, all the way up north to even Page, Arizona, and even beyond. That's that's just what the university is, and it is definitely accessible, especially to you guys at an Arizona tuition rate. Um, I always like to always mention too, is if you are even thinking about transferring, transferring is a great option as well, coming from high school. You know, you go to the MPC or Diné College. There's also other campuses. Um, to be a freshman, you, you'll you be going to the Tucson main campus. But if you're a transfer student, there's some other distance campuses that you could look at as well to attend. Um, but of course, those degree programs they offer are very limited. You know, all the majors are going to be on main campus. So, and I've also Tucson's a great city. So definitely come to, to Tucson if you can. We also have the online program. So if you're interested in continuing taking online courses, I think with high schools and even community colleges going virtual, this is definitely something that's accessible to you as well. If you wanted to still remain in Northern Arizona, but take classes, you can of course get a degree online as well. Um, one of our really great programs that we do offer as well is the Honors College. So the Honors College isn't a different school, it's within the school. Um, you're a U of A student first, then you are selected into different colleges. So some of you may be in the College of Science, the College of Law, um, but the Honors College is just another layer onto that. Um, and being a part of the Honors College looks great if you're going off to medical school, law school, any master's program. So after you complete your four-year degree, um, and even if future employers, Honors College is, is for um, certain students, but of course it's not required. But if you are interested in the other degree programs that we do have on campus, Degree Search is gonna be the best resource for you. Every university has a list of their degrees and this is just such a great tool. Um, but like I said, you're gonna find pretty much any degree that you want that you can get in a four-year bachelor's degrees. Always like to point out that if you are interested in cosmetology, culinary arts. Um, I get a lot of students who are interested in welding or paramedic services. Um, those are less than four-year degrees. So the University of Arizona won't have those programs, but it definitely is a kind of a side gig or a side option that you could do at a local, at Pima Community College, or even just while you're completing your bachelor's degrees, you can get that sort of training while you're in school. Um, but that's not specifically what you would be coming to the university as. You would be getting a bachelor's four-year degree. Um, what's really helpful with this, too, is that you can see an actual list of the types of classes you'll be taking. So if you want to be a veterinary science major, you can see the types of classes. If you have to take chemistry, if you, what kind of math classes you'll have to take, um, all of our degree programs, you have to take at least two semesters of a second language. Um, we do offer Navajo language, two semesters of Navajo language, so you can definitely still take Navajo while you're, um, while you're taking classes in Tucson. So one of the really cool things that you can look at and definitely check out the website. I'm also happy to help with that too. Um, but something about college that you should always consider is not just what you're going to study, but how you're going to get that training, how you're going to get experience. Because when you find a job, on the applications, they don't say, uh, do you have a perfect 4.0 GPA? Were you in class every day? That's not necessarily what they, what they care about the most. Of course, it's important, but they want to know what skills do you have? What skills can you bring to the job? So can you work on in a team? Can you work independently? Can you do public speaking? Um, have you ever supervised a team? Um, all these skills that you're going to get are going to be coming are coming in internships, working on campus. Even if you're working in food services like Panda Express, you learn customer service. You learn all of these skills, and you learn how to be employed. You learn how to be a boss. You learn how to get to work on time. Um, all these important skills that you can get while you're even a student, and you get to make some money on the side, or you can earn college credit 
and that will go towards your degree program. Um, so it's really about building your resume and building your application. So when you go and find a job, you'll be able to already do the things that they they're that they that they're looking for. Um, some of the support services. So of course we're going to help you find jobs. We have a great career center. There's lots of research opportunities on campus. But also, you know, while you're going to school, maybe you need a little bit of extra help. Maybe you need some, a little bit of support. So there's some services you can check out. Um, the SALT Center is really great for students who have learning or attention challenges. We're one of two universities in the entire country that offers this type of program. And they set you up with a success specialist and they really help you with your coursework, with study habits, with time management, you know, because students who have different challenges, of course, need a little bit of extra support sometimes. So definitely a really great option. The earlier you will uh, apply for admissions, the earlier you can apply for the SALT Center. Um, and that's open, you know, as soon as you start school um, at the college level. Another thing that I like to highlight is our counseling and psych services. So don't think when you go to college that you're completely alone and you're completely on your own. Um, the really great thing about <laughs> paying for tuition, paying for a degree, is that you get these services included with it. Um, so there's mental health counselors there. There's wellness services. So if you ever need like medications or anything sent to a pharmacy, we have our own pharmacy there. Um, but even if you find yourself sick and needing to get checked out by um, a nurse practitioner, there's really amazing staff here that really help you. Or if you need to get your flu shot, Currently, we're running a COVID vaccine clinic. Um, so really cool um, services that you're able to check out when you do become a student as well. And this is just an example of some of the other support services we have. Um, Think Tank is tutoring. The A Center is uh, a general academic advising area. So if you're a student who's undecided and you need somebody to help you discover and find new majors and see what is your best fit, um, there's lots of support personnel to help you with that. Maybe you're a student who's the first student to go to college um, and you need, you, you know, you want a mentor, you want to work with another higher level student and get advice from them. First Cats is great. And then of course, SOS is just an office where you can text them, you can call them, you can go into their offices 24 seven and they can help you with whatever you want. Even if you want to know like where the best Highland burrito is, or if you need to know where the library is, you know, that's why they're there. Is that way you can ask any question under the sun. Um, no, no questions asked, I guess. Um, also, another thing about the university that sets us apart is how you can get involved in school. Um, of course, right now it's really kind of unique on, on how you guys are getting experience or finding friends or talking to people virtually. Um, especially if you're not going to school in person, but there's a lot of things to do when you're a student. Um, of course, Zona Zoo is our student section on campus. So uh, when any of our big sporting events were happening, we had like a separate student section that people could join and watch the game at. Um, but right now, you know, we don't invite students to uh, watch those games, but eventually once we start safely opening those, um, that that's probably one of the more fun things that a lot of students talk, typically talk about is seeing a basketball game and just kind of being in that huge arena and being able to experience you know such a high level college sport especially because there's so many basketball players especially and even football players who have come from school our school like um Gronkowski came to U of A Richard Jefferson went uh, was on basketball team Aaron Gordon so a lot of these big name student athletes uh, a lot of them have come to the University of Arizona. So really cool to, to have them represent our team. Um, you can, if sports isn't your thing, there's also plenty of other clubs and organizations to get involved in. And these are all offered usually virtually as well. Um, any student club was able to have their own space um, to host, still host uh, weekly or monthly events, even while we were working and going to school remotely um, just this past year. But there's native student focus clubs, um, there's uh, intramural sports. So if you still want to play sports while you're a student and just kind of like get exercise and be active, there's like frisbee teams, kickball teams, 
um, really any other sport. Rugby, I know, is pretty big with students. Um, the wrestling team, of course, is, is definitely a sport on our campus. But even if you wanted to get into royalty, you know, you want to um, compete for Miss Native American University of Arizona. Um, and then there's also a lot of programs that have mentors um, where you're get, you get assigned a, another student who's a higher level or even a graduate student so that we can kind of get advice from them and develop a relationship so they can help you throughout your um, bachelor's programs. And here's just a quick map of all of our cultural and community support centers. So always like to highlight Native American Student Affairs, um, but we also have the LGBTQ Center, the Women's Resource Center, a Vets Center. So if you plan to go into the military or maybe your family's from a military family, um, there's lots of support services for those students. Or even if you identify as a multicultural student and you wanna access Ac African American Student Affairs or the Abdel Puerto and Ana Guerrero Student Center, the Hispanic and Latinx Student Center, um, you're welcome to go ahead and just walk in and kind of check out what's going on. So hopefully that's like a well-rounded presentation of what the university has to offer. And the last things I like to go over is just cost and how to apply. Um, you know, we offer such amazing programs. You're most likely going to find what you want to study, but you want to talk about if it's going to be affordable for you. Um, so the University of Arizona, we do have the guaranteed tuition plan. So how much you pay for tuition and fees will be the same for all four years of your undergraduate program. If you transfer in, it'll be two years that we guarantee your tuition. So some other universities will increase tuition every single year. We will not do that. And let's say you're a student who's enrolled in the Navajo Nation, Hopi Nation, any of the Arizona's federally recognized tribes, if you even move out of state, or let's say you move to New York for a year and then you come back, you'll always get in-state tuition, which is a huge discount for any students um, when they're coming back to school in Arizona. These are currently the scholarships that we're offering seniors this year. Every year they change it up a little bit. So it could be a little bit different for any juniors, um, but for this year's seniors, we were looking only at core GPA. Next year is gonna be the same where we're only looking at this GPA. And so those are based on the grades you've gotten since from your freshman to the end of your junior year. That's the GPA that we're looking at when you apply as well as for any scholarships. And if you're from Arizona, you will get the resident Wildcat Awards, of course, if you fit within this criteria. So definitely check that out when those are announced. Um, if you want to find other scholarships, we also offer another resource for students to utilize, Scholarship Universe, where it actually matches you up with scholarships. And you can use that right now as an admitted student, as well as in the future, even when you're, you know, when you're, you're a sophomore in college, you can still use Scholarship Universe to search for other things happening um, on campus. Applying, I think, is pretty simple. Um, there's really only three things that we're asking for when you apply to our college. These are the 16 core classes. This is the first thing that we're looking at is seeing what classes you have taken while you're in high school. Even if you're transferring from a community college, sometimes we will still look at what you've done in high school. So we wanna make sure you're taking four years of English, four years of math. Um, all three state universities look at the same core classes and these there's a total of 16. Um, you're actually guaranteed and assured admissions if you have, if you completed all 16 of these by the time you graduate and have a th above a 3.0 GPA or rank in the top 25% of your class. So really helpful. Um, there are exceptions, nursing and engineering and the Honors College do not have the assured admissions, but everything else, if you want to be um, a bachelor's of arts theater major, or if you want to do veterinary science, astronomy, anything like that, all you need is these 16 classes and for you to do well in them. Um, those three things that we want when you do apply is we want you to tell us what your grades are in those 16 classes that I just talked about. We want the application fee. There is a fee waiver. 
So this is just money that we use to process the application and run all the online kind of applications that we build. And then um, we also want the online application. Easy as that. We don't even need your high school transcripts if you're planning to apply straight from high school. Um, not until you actually graduate will we need those transcripts. Um, and then you can always check your future Wildcat, which is just an account that you build to check on where you're at in the application process. Um, the application opens up as soon as July 1st. So if you're a junior, definitely check out your emails um, for any updates regarding that. And lastly, just a quick shout out to our virtual visits team. Um, we have an online virtual tour where it looks pretty much exactly like this computer screen where there's a tour guide and they bring you around campus. They have 360 pictures in the student union. Um, they just take you around campus so that way you can see what it looks like um, and you'll be able to kind of get a, a good feeling if you've never been down south to Tucson. Um, and then all of our college partners like the College of Agriculture and Life Science or the College of the Business Eller College of Management, they'll have individual information sessions every single week where they basically are like this on Zoom, but they're telling you specifically about that college and specifically about those majors. So if you're curious as to what a business student has to go through, um, you can check out, out their information sessions. Um, and then we also have a ton of different social media accounts. So we have an Instagram, we just started a TikTok and I would expect within the next um, couple of months for us to really start using TikTok even more. And then we do have like Facebook and, and different other accounts too. So, um, but I know I really only use Instagram and TikTok and Facebook, but that's, <laughs> that's probably a little more old school for some students. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, this is my contact information. So if you have any sort of question under the sun, um, that's what I'm here for. And um, you can always contact me, even if you're not a senior. Um, that's what I'm here for. Um, so you have my email and my phone number. But I think that's it. Any questions?